<laughs> so you all know who the Westboro Baptist Church is? <laughs> yeah. it sounds like a bunch of you are. They're the guys who stand out in front of the uh, funerals of dead soldiers with signs that say, uh, God hates fags, God kills soldiers. Um, they are known for their very, very radical uh, Christianity. And one of the things I, I find amusing is that even the most right-wing Christian friend that you have will look at the, the Westboro Baptist Church group and they're just not jobs. But at the same time, They'll vote to repeal or to prevent gays from getting married. They'll vote uh, against sex education in school. They'll vote against abortions. They'll vote against all these things. Not because they want to, but because they are required to, because they are literal believers in the, the Bible. The words of the Bible are literal, and thus it's not so much a choice that they have as a requirement. Now. The problem with this is immediate for anybody who's actually read the Bible with a bit of critical thought to it, and that is, if you really do believe in the Bible literally, then you are forced to accept the notions of slavery. I've actually done little bits about slavery in the Bible before here, and some people have tasked me, like, why, why do you keep harping on this one point? Isn't there something else you can say? I say it because it's the most obvious, the most bone-chilling, the most most deeply felt of all of the things. I could talk about Ursary, uh, Exodus uh, da, 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 22, 25, talks about Ursary. Uh, the, give, the loaning of money to another Christian is illegal if you choose to, uh, if you require interest from them. This isn't some casual thing. The Catholic Church forbid Ursary, the taking of interest for loaned money, for centuries. It was an excommunicable offense. It suddenly went away with the uh, Reformation and such, and allowed the credit card companies that we enjoy now to make their business in the banks. But you can see why it was kind of uh, repulsive at the time. But we don't care about that. Our society is based off of adversary, off of interest, off of mortgages, off of mortizations. But slavery, slavery hits us. It's still something that, that we feel. So it's an easy thing for me to bring up. Now, when I bring this up to people, when I bring this up to my literalist friends, or people I'm just having conversations with about this, there are three typical responses that you could get. The first is ignorance. I've never read that pious passage. I don't remember that being in the Bible. Or that's not what my preacher says. Or, oh, you're just misreading it. You know, actually, if it's literalist, I can read it, and it's there in the Bible. I don't have to interpret it at all. If I had to interpret it, then it would be up to my fallible human senses and I could fuck it up. But it's right there. It says slavery is okay. The second is apologetics. And apologetics range from mild to severe. Just like, well, you know, there's also these things that say that, or maybe, maybe you didn't understand what it was talking about. For example, the, the, the passage that most people talk about when they're talking about slavery is out of is out of uh, Exodus, and it says, If thou buy a Hebrew servant, six years shall he serve, and in the seventh he shall go free for nothing. See? Early Christians practiced slavery, but it wasn't like the slavery we had here in America. You're misreading the words. That's weird, because in the very same chapter, 21, just verses 20, it says, And if a man smite his servant, or his maid, with a rod, and he die under his hand, he shall surely be punished. Notwithstanding, if he continues for a day or two, he shall not be punished, for he is your money. This isn't something you can apologize away. Society determines what we consider to be right and wrong, and religion is drug along behind it on a thin leash. <laughs> Struggling, fighting, spitting and cursing the entire way. We're seeing this right now with the debate about gays. The very same things that we fought about a century ago when it came to slavery. We just don't learn. And they say, well, you know, maybe back then it was like that. But some of the other things, the really terrible things we did during slavery, uh, those weren't biblical at all. 
You mean like the raping of, of bondsmaids and slaves? Having sex with them, forcing them to carry your kids like Moses did, like all of the other great patriarchs of the Bible did? Like uh, Leviticus 19.20. And whoever shall lieth carnally with a woman that is bondsmaid, betrothed to a husband, and not at all redeemed, nor freedom given her, shall be scourged. They shall not be put to death, because she was not free. So, if you rape your female slave, even though she has a husband, you have to scourge her, whip her, but he just has to donate a ram to the church. There's no interpretation in this. There is no apologetics that gets you out of this. Yet over and over again, what I hear from people that I'm having these talks with is, slavery isn't wrong, we just fucked it up. And the answer is a very simple no. Slavery is wrong. We were fucked up to try it. Now, the last and third option you can take when you're debating something like this with other people is to admit the absurdity of it. Is to look at the Bible and say, you know what? It says some crazy shit. And maybe some of it we can write down to being magic. We can write, write it down to, to miracles. And other parts we just have to look at and say, it's not all absolutely true. And this is the one position that no literalist can ever take. For to do that, you give up your creds. You give up your, your, your Bible creds. You're not welcome at summer school anymore, the Bible camp. But for whatever reason, it's too scary a thing to lose that assurance, to look at it and say, I'm willing to give up my sense of righteousness. I'm willing to, to give up my ability to judge other people. I'm, I have to give up all of this, this me, this assurance that I've built up, this this tower beneath me that makes me feel like I'm worth something in exchange for what? Why should I do this? Why should I give this up? Why should I admit it to its absurdity when I have based my life on this? Hopefully, because as a Christian, you've been called to be brave. You've been called to bear no false witness. You've been called to tell the truth. If this is something that is too scary, it is too difficult a burden to bear, and I suggest you find another religion.